we have arrived. We are at the big A, ready for the tailgate, and the game will be in a little bit. Otani v. Valdez. We're grilling sausage before the game. It's gonna be a great night. The one-two pitch. Yes, it is true, my friends. I indeed went to opening night, sat in section 206, but the game over but the game result was not what we wanted. It was still great to be at Angel Stadium for the first time in nearly three years since my last experience, of course, before this whole pandemic became a thing. How could you forget about me, though? You didn't invite me to the game. What the heck are you doing? Calm down. Also, Joe Madden, change the lineup. Stop having Joe Antony lead off. Have somebody like Benny Barsh lead off. Yep. It's a big reason why we're doing terribly to start the season. And if he doesn't keep changing it, fire Joe Madden. And also fire Paul Serrano and Jeremy Reed. Their, the hitting coaches are not good enough to do their jobs. I'm sorry, uh, Ogley Lodge fan. If you had told me this in advance, maybe um, you'd be able to go with me. But of course, I don't want your overly loyalness to get in the way. I will agree with you that I, he's not been the greatest with his lineups and his uh, decisions he's made through these four games in the season so far. But give it time. He might adjust his ways to a way in which we would prefer later on in the season. Nope. So, today for our episode of Angels Recap, I'm going to detail to you what happened in the four games in the Houston series, what my experience is like when I went to game one at Angel Stadium, and then we will look into our little two-game interleague series against the Miami Marlins. And hopefully in that series, we don't turn into fish. Bruh. Obviously, I went to the game, and I'll tell you this, it's a very different atmosphere if you go to the game than instead of listening to it on your TVs at home or in the car on AM 830. So, great experience. I really enjoyed the tailgate. Todd Fox um, and uh, Chase and James, that was a really good tailgate. I was so glad to meet y'all for the first time. Of course, uh, go check out Halos in the infield. Uh, Todd Fox does the post-game shows after every Angels game, and he's always super good at it. Um, even Fernando will do them sometimes, and James with his pre-games does the predictions as well. He's good too on his shows. So the first game, of course, we had Shohei Otani opposed by Framber Valdez. Each starter looked dominant. It was a playoff-esque atmosphere. The crowd was, was pumped up, booing. Altuve and Bregman and cheering any little moment we got any contact made. It felt like a playoff game in a lot of moments. The game started off good. Um, Altuve struck out right away no. against Otani. He ended up striking out a couple more times in the game. That's always a good sight to see. Otani would end up with nine strikeouts in the game through four and two-thirds innings. Impressive. One mistake was the uh, RBI base hit by Alex Bregman in the third inning. And at that point, we would remain scoreless into the eighth inning. Angels only having two, um, two, two to four hits, and two of those hits were by the best cleanup hitter in Angels history, known as Matt Duffy. So in the eighth inning, Ryan Tapera came on, and he threw one pitch to Bregman outside, and then the next pitch, Bregman crushed it into the bullpen to make it 2 0 Astros. And to make matters worse, Jordan Alvarez would bomb one to center, and it would be back-to-back -back home runs 
for mass exits for the Angels fans as the Houston Astros lead 3 0. Angels try to get a rally going in the eighth. Two quick outs, but Brandon Marsh gets hit with a pitch. And David Fletcher comes up and does a David Fletcher. Vintage. And the benefits of having Jordan Alvarez out there is that he's a, a very terrible defender, and even Astros fans would agree with me that he's not good defensively. Ball past Alvarez, um, the center fielder, I believe it was McCormick or Siri, had to back him up. And Fletcher will easily get to third to make it 3 1, but Otani hit one to the track and he just missed the home run that was, it was it a big five, thing the just missed it and swinging at first pitch was a big issue for me in game one and that was a pretty big reason why and also framber valdez kicked our ass uh game two was probably the worst of these games it, this was the least competitive of the games as the astros would claim this game as well winning it by a count of 13 to 6 <coughs> and we only scored four of our six runs in the last two innings in garbage time so early on in the game it actually was looking things were looking up at the start despite the fact that we gave up a home run to the short and talented altuve compliments of reed detmers so right after that and just in the very next half inning jared walsh would tie the game with an rbi single and then Somehow, one of the better ca defensive catchers in baseball by the name of Martin Maldonado makes a passed ball. All right, Martin, I'll remind you this. If you're a catcher, catch the ball. That's what they're supposed to do. This is correct. The passed ball makes it 2-1 Angels. Let's go to a little later in the game. Fourth inning, Aledmiz Diaz, of all people, homered to make it a tie game at two. And then this is where the game gets a little bit out of hand. Another run, uh, Astros scored two more runs in the next two innings, and then in inning number seven was when things got really bad. The Angels would end up surrendering eight runs, and some of this was compliments of Michael Myers, not the Halloween one. And it would start by Jeremy Pena, who I mentioned could be pretty sneaky in this series, and he ended up being pretty impactful, would get his first career home run. Michael Brantley, Alex Bregman, Jordan Alvarez, and again, Aledmiz Diaz would make it 9-2, and then to pad the lead, another guy who loves Angels pitching almost as much as Ramon Laureano, a guy by the name of Kyle Tucker, would make it 12-2 with a three-run homer. Kyle Tucker adds more salt to the wound with another home run, and we do pretty much nothing, and the Angels lose 13-6. Okay, let's talk about Saturday night. Saturday, April 9th, Game 3 of 4 in this series. The Angels win! Shutout style, 2 to nothing is the final score as Noah Syndergaard, making his Angels debut, wins the battle of two vets coming off of Tommy John against Justin Verlander. But even then, I watched some of this game on the TV. Verlander looked pretty good. He was still throwing mid-90s on his fastball. His curveball looked good. The slider was there as well. But he would, but in the second inning was his first mistake. After his t, after he was saved by Chas McCormick robbing Mike Trout of a home run, he would face Jared Walsh, and the very first pitch he threw. went to Jared. Right down the middle, Justin, um, might want that pitch back, buddy. Oh, and by the way, the balls aren't juiced. So that was one nothing, and then Thor was carving up Astros, and he was getting ground balls everywhere, and even when he was giving, he gave up only two hits. The team gave up only two hits Amazing. in the entire game, which is absolutely worth it, like three tips of the cap. That's impressive. Houston's lineup, holding them to two hits in the entire game, that's extraordinary. And then we go all the way to the bottom of the eighth inning 
We have Mike Trout up with a 1-2 count. He is facing Astros reliever Ryan Stanek. Stanek has and Trout have had some matchups in the past when Ryan was with the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. But in this match, let's see who wins this matchup. Isn't that just so refreshing to see, my friends? But what a bomb by Mike Trout. I'll take mine on the rocks. Woo! Rizel nails down the save rather easily. The Angels have, for the first time in 2022, in the regular season, won an actual MLB game. And then in Game 4, we go back to our wonderful losing ways by not being able to do a darn thing on offense. The only good thing we did was having Astros legend Jack Mayfield hit a home run against his former team to make it one nothing, And some pretty controversial moments in this game as well that cost us, even though we kind of gave the game away in the eighth inning. In the bottom of the third inning, this is where the little bit of controversy is going to come in, though I was just watching this video myself. But I want to see what you think of it, for those who may have watched this on the TV. So Trout's going to fly out here to Kyle Tucker in right field. And I want you guys to tell me if you think Wade is safe or out. What? A roadblock? There was no obstruction here. Are you kidding me? Where's the obstruction? It, because Maldonado has the ball here, the, the, it, he's allowed to block the plate. If he has the ball, the catcher can do whatever the hell he wants. That's the rule. It's not like that one play in Miami many years ago when Cozart tried to play the challenge. Zach Cozart, Angels legend, tried to play the challenge game because he thought that the catcher illegally blocked the plate in that game. Look it up. It's called the worst call in MLB history. You'll find it all over YouTube and the video comes up. But honestly, I'm watching that video and even before I showed it to you, I don't think Tyler Wade even got the tip of the plate. It's a little hard to see, but if you're going to challenge it and you don't know, challenge safer out, not obstruction. Knuckleheads. So, and at that point, um, this is where the game was slowly lost. Suarez started struggling a bit, and after getting a runner on base, some bad catching. Kurt Suzuki, if you're a catcher, catch the ball happened because the runner could have had a. We could have had double play on the runner, but the runner moved up to second with one out, second and third. Suarez pulled Austin Warren in, two RBIs to Bregman, and the game was lost at that point. Another run scores on a wild pitch in the eighth inning, and the Astros get another one, and we are unable to rally back. And may I point out in the bottom of the seventh, we have a runner on base with, like, no outs. Kurt Suzuki's up. He doesn't bunt. You have him swing, and he predictably struck out. Bruh. Come on, guys. Small ball. Stop with the go deep. That's not how baseball works. you got to play small ball when you have runners on base, and that's a perfect situation to do it. Maybe you'll do that tonight against Miami. So the final in this game was Astros 4, Jack Mayfield 1, Presley gets the save, his second of the series.